Hello there everyone, I'm Manakel and welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls. So for this playthrough I was kind of deciding between what build I want to um, use. I was thinking about a Hyper Mage build, but I got to the point uh, where Hyper Mage is really easy, especially the start is very easy and it's, it's quite boring after some time, after some playthrough. So I decided to go for something uh, different. My other choice was a strength build. I wanted basically to do a small cosplay um, using his weapon and, and basically some basic pyromancy. But I also thought that that's also kind of generic. So I decided, you know what, I didn't do a Artorias cosplay for a long time. And Artorias cosplay is good in uh, for me always and fun in that sense that it's the only cosplay uh, that allows me to use the deprived class as the starting class without any any real problems because if you ever watch my streams um, you probably will know that I'm the kind of person that I'm very um, I'm always trying to make my builds as optimal as possible and the problem with the deprived class is if you're going for an end build it really doesn't fit because you got too many much points in uh, fate. If you're going for a fate build, the same thing with intelligence. If you're going for a strength build, you don't need int and fate whatsoever. So this build really is uh, not the best. If it if this was Dark Souls 2, this one would be a great build for a mundane, uh, a great class for a mundane build for a mundane uh, weapon for mundane weapons. But since this is Dark Souls 1, this is really not useful for anything. I think except. The Artorias build, or builds that basically want to use everything, but those builds basically are uh, mostly high level. So I decided to do a Artorias cosplay, I didn't do it for a long time. As you can see, I'm starting as a Deprived, and I'm using the Pendant. I was thinking about using um, the Master Key, but the Master Key really makes the game quite repetitive after some time. Every time when you start a game, uh, usually, at least most people, I also... Um, usually we go for the master's key because it allows us to open doors and get start good starting equipment like the Astora Straight Sword, like the uh, Grass Crest Shield, um, like um, the Elite Knight set early on. It allows you to get so many powerful items early in the game, which is fun and cool and gets boring after a very short time. So I decided to go for something else. Um, I think the character will look good. I'm making him a Astora Noble because basically, well... Artorias was a knight, so probably he looks similar. Um, I'm also giving him black hair. I think that um, black hair should be the best, because Artorias was kind of designed or based on uh, Guts from the Berserk manga. Um, Semi-long hair, I think it's the best um, possibility here. Other really don't fit that much. Maybe the sweep back, but there's really no hairstyle. Or maybe the receding, but Guts didn't have... Um, receding hair, he just had short pointy uh, hair, so um, I guess semi-long black hair will be okay. So without further ado, let's uh, start the game and let's watch the intro. But before I start, I need to tell you guys, um, I'm recording, this is actually from my live stream, so you will be seeing me talking with my viewers from time to time if they ask any questions, of, if they... Uh, basically chatting with my viewers, so be uh, aware that I'm going to be uploading th this also to YouTube, but this is actually from my live stream, so let's start the game and let's see the great intro. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire. And with fire came disparity. Heat and cold. Life and death. And of course, light and dark. Then from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, 
the first of the day. The Witch of Isolith and her Daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight and his Faithful Knights. And the Furtive Pygmy, so easily forgotten. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. Mandal is a good intro, it never gets old for me. I have to say that Dark Souls 1 intro and Demon Souls intro are probably the best from the um, from the series. It's kind of hard for me to decide which one is better. Both of them both of them are great. I think Demon Souls is more well Demon Souls I think has a bit more interesting intro in, in the fact that um, you know, the, there is the whole idea of the God being and, and God and the Old One and everything like that. Here we have uh, the intro also about the creation of the world, dragons and the, um, the four souls. But even from the start, in Demon in Dark Souls, you see that um, Gwen and uh, the other guys aren't really gods. They are just beings that existed and... Uh, found incredibly powerful souls in the first flame, but they 
you know, it's not, they aren't called gods. You see that they actually were alive before they found it, and they were some kind of beings before that. Um, it's not stated they were human, that's of course, uh, according to the lore, they could not be human, because uh, humans are descendants of the dark sign. But it, it is shown that they um, existed, so they are basically only very powerful beings that um, gained uh, their power mostly through finding the um, the first souls in the flame. And in Demon Souls, it's it's more about the god and um, god creating humans and god creating the old one and shit getting real and and stuff like that. So I think Demon Souls in in a way has a better intro, but both of them are, are great. I think it just depends on what you prefer. And Demon Souls has some interesting fights, like like showing the uh, people fighting, but. Dark Souls 1 has uh, the fight of uh, Gwen and other great ones against the the dragons, so... Oh, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Regrettably. I have failed in my mission, but perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family, Thou who art undead art chosen, and thine exodus from the undead asylum maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know, and I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh, and this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. Oh, like, you could give us your armor and weapon and shield, bro, but... Oh well. Anyways, uh, talking more about the... Okay, I need to remember how to parry in Dark Souls 1. Again, a bit too early. Come on! Okay. Yeah, timing parry is, uh, is a bit different in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. And recently I was playing a lot of Dark Souls 2. I was doing some interesting builds. Uh, for example, a life per kill build. Basically a build that is inspired by Bloodborne. Since I cannot play Bloodborne, since it's only on a PS4, fuck you Sony. Um, I decided to try to make a... Maybe not life regeneration build, because that's... I already did, by the way, a life regeneration build. But I basically wanted to do a build that uh, gives you back life after you kill enemies and stuff like that. So I basically am testing out a build like that. I'll probably add it on my YouTube channel uh, for you guys to see. So uh, be sure to check that out. It's probably gonna be up in, um, in some time. Additionally, um, continuing what I was talking about intros, um, I think Dark Souls 2 has the worst intro. Um, Dark Souls 2 intro is really weird for me, I never never liked it that much. Um, it's kinda long and really doesn't give you that much info, it's basically, oh you are undead, find a uh, cure. And at the same time it kinda destroys immersion, cause Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 didn't show your character in any way. Uh, Dark Souls 1, I mean, and Demon Souls didn't show your character in any way. They basically only uh, told you the story of the world and, and gave you the opportunity to do whatever you want in it. In Dark Souls 2, they went with that weird intro, weird long intro that basically shows you that your main character in the intro is male. Like, there's no way to think that the character in the intros of Dark Souls 2 is not a male character. And it really destroys immersion for like girls playing the game, for females playing the game, or just for anyone wanting to make a female character. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To lead 
survive the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. Lordran. AKA Drang Lake in Dark Souls 2. Although some people will kill you for saying that. <laughs> whenever I see this um, area, by the way, whenever I see the Undead Berg and basically the whole um, ruins everywhere around the uh, tall uh, walls and stuff. Um, recently I was playing again Dark Souls 2, like I said, and I was going through the Ivory King DLC area. And boy, Eleum Lois in the Ivory King looks exactly like uh, the Undead Berg and basically uh, Lord Run's uh, surround su the surrounding of Anolondo basically. Um, it looks identically to uh, to how it looks in in here. So I'm kind of wondering sometimes if it's a uh, not subtle way of Thrones of B Team showing us that yeah, this is the same place, or is it maybe um, a let's say way of um, reusing the same content and and uh, just being lazy. I I'm always wondering about that. But yeah, if you play Dark Souls 1, especially when, yeah, like you like I said, when you're flying here um, and you see everything from above, you see the walls from above, and then you go to Dark Souls 2 and uh, to the Eleum Lois area in the Ivory King DLC, all of the walls really look very, very similar. I kind of feel that it probably is a bit of laziness, Probably they just decided, you know what, we're gonna reuse the same asset we got uh, from earlier, from the earlier game and, and just insp get inspired by that. Uh, that's possible, definitely, but at the same time I, I kind of have a feeling that maybe, maybe, just maybe, it, it is supposed to mean something, you know? Because it, it is really very similar. If you guys never checked that out, be sure to, to see it, because it, really the similarities are striking and I think it's not a coincidence. Maybe it's a bit of laziness, but definitely um, uh, it's like, I think that maybe it is a bit of laziness, but they cannot be so lazy to just reuse stuff. It, it, has to, it had to have some purpose, I feel. But anyways, we're going for the standard start of picking up every item here. However, like I said, because I didn't go for the um, uh, Master's Key, I will not be able to go and uh, pick up things like the Astora Straight Sword, uh, things like uh, the Grass Crest Shield, uh, and basically, you know, stuff like that. Which is actually good because it's gonna make the game more challenging and a bit more fun for me. Um, if I, of course, will not die here, which is... Which is quite possible, actually, so let's, let's hope that's not gonna happen. Although, like I said, it's only me, and I fail a lot, so... I'm trying to pick up basically everything from here, so I won't have to come back here again. I probably will not be using this Weyhander, but I just want to pick up this, since I'm here, and get the binoculars, and will be out of this place. I'll probably die trying to escape here, but then that really doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm gonna die here, yep. If he didn't stand in my way, I would be able to uh, run away from here, but since he was in my way, yeah. But that, that was planned, so that's not really a problem. And one more spot, let's go get the s stock and let's get the first um, Firekeeper Soul, and after that we'll start exploring and go kill the Tower of Demon and stuff. So, like I was saying, um, it's, it's quite similar. The Elum Lois area and uh, the Undead Berg definitely have a similar design. I think it's planned, but it may as well be just, you know, from some B team laziness and they basically reusing or um, inspiring themselves with uh, the first game. But from what I understand, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2 run on a completely different engine, so I don't think it's actually possible technically. I don't know how programming really works, so, you know, it's. Don't, don't quote me on anything, but. I think that um, since it's working on a different engine, they probably cannot just copy-paste anything from one game to another. They actually have to uh, create it uh, from scratch again. Now, I think that is how it's wor working, but like I said, don't quote me on that. I'm not an expert. I don't know almost anything about programming and 
stuff. But I know the games work on a different engine. Uh, Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 work on a different engine. Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls, I think, work on the same engine, though. So, yeah. But definitely, definitely Dark Souls 2 is running on a completely different um, engine. Maybe that's why 60 FPS in Dark Souls 2 on PC is so terrible. So let's pick up the Firekeeper Soul and we'll dive into the ghost and that's gonna be it for this place. Actually I didn't die. Who wouldn't guess that? Huh. I usually die here, uh, it's quite typical for me, so I, you know, it's not like I actually care if I die or not, but I usually die here, because it's very hard to actually avoid them after you pick up the soul, but I managed to do that, so yay me. Yay me indeed. However, I don't know even why I didn't die, since it's actually gonna take me longer to get back to the bonfire now. But I guess I will have more time to talk now, since you guys probably already noticed that. I am... I probably don't know how to shut up. I almost never shut up. Always have something to talk about. So... Um, recently, when I'm recording this, when I'm streaming this, by the way, um, we are just close, like, a week after uh, the release of Scholar of the First Sin. The re... I want to call it a remastered version, but it is really not a remastered version in any way. It, it's basically a... It's Dark Souls 2 uh, released again. It's not a remastered version. Yeah, they added some graphics update, updates and, and made the graphics look better, but it's really not that visible, especially on PC. It's barely visible. Let's talk with the Crestfallen, and after that I'll continue talking about the remastered quote uh, version. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are, actually, two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happened. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on, but I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> Your face, you're practically hollow, but who knows? Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> mm, what? Restoring your humanity? Well, there are a few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the quickest way, although I never do it, is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity. Coveting thy neighbor is only human, after all. <laughs> what are you looking at? Don't try anything clever. You might regret it. Hmm? What? You want to hear more? Oh, that's all we need. Another inquisitive soul. Well, listen carefully then. One of the bells is up above in the undead church, but the lift is broken. You'll have to climb the stairs up the ruins and access the undead burrow through the waterway. The other bell is back down below the undead burrow within the plague-infested blight town. But i die again before I step foot in that cesspool. <laughs> Bloody hell, what is it now? You ask too many questions. 
Okay, that's it that he has to say. Let's pick up two additional items that I skipped here and we'll continue. The Crestfallen is actually a good source of info. Um, he talks about a lot of things that happen or will happen in the game in the future. For example, he... Um, after you kill the Taurus Demon, if I remember correctly, he will start talking about uh, about the apprentice, ab about the sorcerer's apprentice, uh, that he disappeared and, and uh, he wonders where he is. So that's your cue basically to find him. Um, he will also talk about um, the, f uh, the Pyromancer, the old Pyromancer. Um, so that's another info. He will talk about Big Hat Logan. I think he will also talk about... Uh, yeah, he will talk also about Rhea, when she will appear with her bodyguards um, uh, close to Petrus, so she will, uh, he will talk also about her. I don't know if he talks about Lothrek, I thought that he will, I think he does, but I don't remember that, so don't quote me on that one. But I, I know he talks about the other guys. Mm -hmm. What now? I'm not up. Okay, that's all he has to say, so let's finally go through here. I'm not going to be talking with... Um, with Petrus yet, because I don't want to basically waste time here. Let's go, let's get to the Taurus Demon, and after that I will um, attack with Petrus when I activate the lift again, maybe. Parrying! Best thing in the game! Definitely. Yeah, parrying in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 is so different that um, really in Dark Souls 2 I almost never parry. In Dark Souls 1 you can basically parry through uh, the first half of the game without any any problem. And I guess it's... I guess that has uh, good and bad sides. If you get... Um, if you remember how to parry, if you basically get good at parrying, um, the early stages of the game get very very easy. Um, definitely, um, just because you can basically parry anyone. You can parry, parry Havel, you can parry the Black Knight, you can parry every Hollow basically. So yeah, the early stages of the game can get easier uh, because of parrying, but that's, I feel, just rewarding good plays, uh, good players, like people that are just skilled in the game in some way. I'm quite good at parrying in Dark Souls 1, I have to say, but I'm like, you know, uh, definitely not not any kind of pro player, you will see me die a lot in the game, I'm not the most skilled guy in, in the world, like here you can see. Yeah, I, I just said that... Oh god, your delay on that attack! Fucking asshole! The moment I said that I'm quite good at parrying, I missed three parries in a row, so... <laughs> don't, don't even... Uh, pretend I didn't say that at all, because that, that clearly wasn't true, right? But anyways, like I said, I, I basically um, like parrying in Axos 1, but it, it does make the game much easier and it, it allows you to get rid of very powerful enemies very easily, so it's, I guess, a double-edged sword where the game gets less challenging, but it rewards you, so I, I guess, it, like I said, it depends on your on your uh, perception of that fact. Dark Souls 2 really, for me, makes uh, parrying uh, useless, and, well, it's harder to parry in Dark Souls 2, first, that's first, uh, the first thing, and the second thing is, in Dark Souls 2, if you, most enemies have multiple hit combos, uh, most, even like regular hollow enemies, or regular knight enemies that aren't like, you know, bigger humanoids, or anything like that, um, in Dark Souls 2, most of them have multiple hit combos, so parrying is actually quite, not only difficult, it's more difficult definitely, but it's also um, quite dangerous for you, because if you decide to parry an enemy, and he will go for a, and you will miss the parry, uh, he will usually hit you at least two times, because, like I said, most enemies in the game, in Dark Souls 2 have multi-hit combos, uh, so they ne almost never attack you like with one swing, they usually do mul many swings in a row that deal a lot of damage when combined, so it's it's another thing that makes parrying in Dark Souls um, 2 harder and for me most of the time really not that um, rewarding, because yeah, if, if you parry you will kill your enemy, that's great, 
um, right? But at the same time, if you miss the parry, which is, you know, only human, everyone can, can fuck up from time to time. If you miss the parry, you will take so much damage, uh, but at, at the same time, it really doesn't matter, because you have, um, oh, come on. Son of a bitch. I said that I'm decent at parrying and I'm getting fucked by enemies. Okay. So at the same time, like I said, it, it is, in Dark Souls 2, it's definitely more challenging and um, more punishing if you miss a parry, but at the same time, I guess the fact that you have healing items uh, is kinda rewarding in that way, so it's kinda like a 50 50, it kinda evens out, I guess. But I still don't like parry in Dark Souls 2. It's, it's I think, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, even though they are very similar, they have very different play styles, uh, both of them. Dark Souls 1 is all about avoiding damage uh, by either parrying enemies or rolling since you get so much iframes on your fast rolls. Dark Souls 2 um, is in that sense very weird for me always because you really don't have that uh, you know, invincibility uh, for your character uh, at the early stages of the game because you have low adaptability and with low adaptability you have low uh, agility and, and you don't have too much iframe so it really makes for me at least uh, it makes Dark Souls uh, to early areas much harder and just in general comp the gameplay is comp really really I got stuck here that, that was interesting there. My character got stuck in the... Uh, between the wooden platform and I couldn't move. That, that's a new one. That's a new one. Platforming 101. So like I said, it's, it's quite... The start of both games for me is quite different. Um, even though you basically go to the similar areas with easy enemies and with... Um, oh yeah, I don't have the key yet. With easy enemies and a... Uh, kind of, with basically similar, like, you know, visual uh, look to them, right? Enemies in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 in the early areas are basically hollow knights, hollow soldiers. Um, so they, they are quite similar, but the playstyle is completely different in both games for me. The early, early uh, playstyle. And uh, like I said, Dark Souls 1 really, if you learn how to parry, early game is quite, quite easy. Um, later it's more about dodging and stuff, but... Okay, I need to actually switch my weapon, because you cannot do a... You cannot do this. A kick with the s dog, which is quite unfortunate, to be honest. Let's wait for this guy to do his thing. Let's get to the merchant. Let's buy... Uh, I basically need two items, but I want to go to here also first. Oh, come on. Good thing about Dark Souls 2 is definitely the fact that you can sprint up ladders and stuff. That's that's definitely very very fun and very good. Yeah, both games are really, even though they are uh, the same universe and and design in basically the same way, they really have uh, different playstyles. I cannot really compare to Demon Souls because. I did play Demon's Souls like a bit, um, I already mentioned that I think multiple times on my stream, but um, I did play Demon's Souls a bit on my friend's PS3, but I don't own a PS3 myself. Um, so I actually never had a opportunity to play the Demon's Souls a lot, you know, like, it, and you know how I think you, you can understand what the difference is. It's completely different to play the game 
to play any game on your friend's uh, console or anything like that and to play the same game on your own time, on your own uh, console, on your own PC or whatever. Um, not in a hurry and, and just, you know, do whatever you want with it. It's, it's a completely different experience and it basically playing a bit of it on my friend's console only made me want to play it even more and uh, made me feel jealous that I don't have a PS3, but yeah, I, I really never um, never decided to buy one. It's, it's just quite expensive for me. I Usually um, all of my money goes to... Um, I'm, I'm usually trying to save up all of my money either for uh, my fiancé or for my uh, later... That I'm, uh, for the studies that I'm gonna be finishing. I, I need to finish my second degree in um, the English language and translations. So I, I need as much you know, as much money saved up as I can. So I really buying a whole console. Plus I would have to buy a additional TV for it, cause I wouldn't want to use my monitors, my uh, PC monitors for that. Um, and I actually don't have a TV, cause I don't watch TV at all. So I basically would have to buy everything for it. It, it would be quite expensive for me. Well now, you seem to have your wits about you. Hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> Things are getting treacherous in these parts. A horrible goat demon has moved in below. And up above, there's that humongous drake and a bull demon too. If you stick around this place, it might end up being your grave. <laughs> yeah, I'm not here to chit-chat. We talk business or we talk nothing at all. Okay, so let's uh, buy from him the bottomless box, the resident key, and one more thing that I want to buy from him. Actually, the orange guide, the soft stone. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. Thank you kindly. <laughs> He's got one more thing that I want to talk with him. Oh, you again. I hope you've brought plenty of souls. <laughs> What a waste of time. Go and fall off a cliff. Um, he didn't say it, but he basically calls something Yulia here. Um, there are a lot of speculations, and probably everyone has his own um, op opinion on that. Uh, most people think that he basically is crazy, and uh, like you saw, he he does that. Uh, he does that uh, cuddling move with his hand, like he's. Uh, uh, he has some kind of animal there, maybe a cat or a dog or something like that. Um, some people think that he basically is crazy and, and like f maybe thinks that there's a dog in there or a cat and that's what uh, he's calling Yulia. I really feel that uh, the hand movement is one thing, but I think Yulia is his uh, weapon. Because if you kill him, he drops... Most, I think everyone knows that by now. Um, he actually drops a um, katana. Uh, which is uh, quite a early, very good weapon for a dexterity bird early on. Um, so he drops a katana, and I think he actually um, is referring that weapon when he talks about Yulia. Granted, you know, it, it's just me, my speculation, my uh, idea, but I always had a feeling that it, it cannot be just that he's crazy and is... Uh, Imagining a cat or anything or a animal there. I always had a feeling that, that that's probably his weapon that that kind of looks like he j is just he gave um, a name to his weapon and that that's what Yulia is It's fun that he always kills himself here Okay, let's get rid of this actually Although maybe not maybe I can can I? No, I cannot okay So I always thought that that's probably just he, him talking with his uh, with his weapon, giving a name to his weapon. But like I said, everyone has their own opinion, so it's, it's basically a matter of preference, I guess. But that, that's just my uh, two cents there, my my personal opinion. I always believe that he basically is just talking with his weapon. He may be crazy, but it doesn't mean that. Uh, he just didn't give a name to his own weapon. Interesting that you rolled like that there. Uh, 
dodge like that, I should say. Oh, please, dude. Please, that counted damage. To make the fight faster, let's actually get a gold pine resin on my weapon. Oh, come on, I thought I'm close enough. Okay. So for the first part of this, I think I'll kill the Taurus demon. Um, I'll kill the Taurus demon, open up the shortcut back to um, the bonfire, and... And that's gonna be it. And I'll continue from that part. Um, usually, I would be killing the Hellkite Drake. Um, shortly after this. Uh, however, since I didn't open up the shortcut because I don't have the... Oh, that, that was a bad hit. He actually could have killed me with that. Since I don't have the shortcut open, like I said, uh, because I don't have the... Um, uh, the master key. Um, I, I think I'll just... Keep him for now, and I will kill the Hellkite Drake later. Killing the Hellkite Drake, it can be a bit tricky. Um, it's not the fact of avoiding his damage that there are ways to do that. It's just you have to have a quite high damage out output because if you stay too long in the fight, he will go to a mom to a point where um, it's hard to avoid any of his flame attacks. So you have to hide. And when you hide, he jumps back on his spot sooner or later. And when he goes back to his spot sitting up there, where you uh, will see him in a moment, uh, he will start healing up if he is below 50% health. So you basically have to have a high damage output to kill him as fast as possible. So the uh, hyper ring, the red tear stone ring for hyper damage is the best option for him. Ah, hello. You don't look hollow. Far from it. I am Soler of Astora. An adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. You find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> oh, aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition, if you have a moment. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? This pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. We are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds, and engage in jolly cooperation. Of course, we are not the only ones engaged in this, but I am a warrior of the sun. Spot my summon signature easily by its brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Okay, Soler, bro, if you say so. Soler is a cool bro, our fucking sun bro. I know a lot of people are still speculating that Soler is the Sun's firstborn, so basically Gwyn's son, but I know it was debunked and basically uh, called a fake and false by Miyazaki himself, so I guess um, there's really not many points of saying that he is. Um, funny thing is that Andre was actually planned to be uh, Gwyn's firstborn in the early scripts of the game, from what I read in, in interviews and stuff like that, so. Andre actually is uh, the closest to uh, the firstborn in the game, not Soler. I think Soler is basically a troll 
to all NPC that makes uh, that is uh, made to make us think that he is uh, the first bond. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part of my Artorias playthrough. Um, I'll be back soon with more content for you. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.